yes we will discuss some more problems today on columns so i think i have covered up to this fourth problem next fifth problem a hollow alloy tube 6 meter long with external diameter of 50 mm and in and inner diameter of 30 mm was found to extend by 2.98 mm under a tensile load of 50 kN find the buckling load for the tube when it is used as a strut with both ends spinned also find the safe load on the tube taking factor of safety as 4 yeah to understand the problem here it's a hollow alloy tube 6 meters long so i have drawn this figure here this tube is 6 meters long and uh, cross section is like this outer diameter is 50 mm inner diameter is 30 mm it's a hollow circular section when this tube uh, with this cross section and length is subjected to tensile force of 50 kN so you can see an extension of 2.98 mm so the the tube expands or elongates elongates by 2.98 uh, mm so that is one thing another thing is suppose if the same tube is used as a strut strut means column strut means column with both ends uh, pinned or hinged condition what is the buckling load uh, that column can carry that means euler's buckling load that column can carry so here if you understand here there are two things here one is initially it is subjected to tensile force and extension is measured then afterwards suppose if the same tube is used as a column then with both ends pin to hinged condition then what is the buckling load that column can carry using euler's formula so first we have to apply the formula for this case when it is subjected to tensile force of 50 kN like this what is the value of here in this we are going to use this formula this is the first formula we are using in sym delta l is equal to pl by ae where delta l is the increase in length p is the tensile force l is the length of the tube a is the cross section area of the tube e is hence modulus so in this given problem delta l is given as 2.98 mm p is given as 50 kN l is 6 meters area you can calculate from the diameters it is pi by 4 into d uh, external diameter square minus internal diameter square it's a hollow circular tube so e is unknown so what we have to do is n modulus we have to find out so to find n modulus he has given this data so use this formula so delta l is equal to pl by ae so e will be pl divided by delta l into a so this is what so p is in uh, kilonewton convert that into newtons so it is 50 kilonewton you know so 50 kilonewton means it is 50 into 10 power 3 newton l is in meters you convert that into millimeters because normally we express the uh, n modulus in newton per mm square so convert that length to millimeters so 6 meters means 6 6000 millimeter divided by pi by 4 into that is the area of this tube outer diameter square minus inner diameter square that is 50 square minus 30 square into delta l he has given 2.98 see in millimeter okay so substitute in this formula simplify you will get the value of e so e will also will be newton per mm square so it is n modulus of that alloy metal it is not steel it is an alloy So 0.8 into 10 power 5 newton per mm square. So this is the value of E we got from the tensile test data. Now suppose if the tube is used as a column or a strut of length 6 meters, both ends hinged condition or pinned condition, then what is the value of the buckling load or crippling load that tube can take? So for that we have to use that Euler's formula. which is given by pcr is equal to pi square ei by l square in both ends are hinged you know that effective length is equal to actual length so that is capital l is equal to small l it is 6000 mm area of the tube is same thing that pi by 4 into d not square minus di square i value we need moment of inertia of the hollow circular section will be 
pi by 64 into d naught power 4 minus di power 4. If you substitute and simplify for di and d naught as uh, 30 and 50 respectively, you will get this value of i. It is in millimeter power 4. Now, once you know this L, A and I, you just substitute in this formula PCR is equal to pi square EI by L square. So, E value we have to take this 0.8 into 10 power 5 into pi square into I is this value divided by L is once again 6 meters means 6000 millimeter square. Now, simplify this, you will get the value of PCR in newtons. Please note that you are going to get the value of the buckling load or the crippling load Euler's formula in newtons. Then he has asked for safe load. Safe load means whatever buckling load or crippling load you are going to get divided by factor of safety. So in this problem, factor of safety has been given as 4. So crippling load you have got um, 5856.6 divided by 4. So it becomes 1400 something. Okay. Just calculate that. All of you open your calculator. Just check this value, I value and uh, this PCR uh, value, be fast, that's all. So you have to get the value, you can check this E value also. Once you get this E value from the tensile test data, you substitute that value of E in the Euler's formula to get the buckling load. Please check this value, E, I and PCR, these three values you please check. Be fast. Four into fifteen to ten power three into six thousand divided by five into fifty square minus thirty square into two point nine eight. So we can express that in point A as point eight into ten power five MPA or Newton per mm square. Please check that. You can check the value. Sir, uh, ah. 5, 8, 5, 0. 0.68. Yeah, the key value, na? Ala PC, ala? Yes, sir. Five eight five six point six. Okay. That is okay. So that is the value of uh, crippling load, IS crippling load. Simple problem, but uh, E value you have to get from that uh, data, tension test data. Okay. Okay, we'll go to next problem. Determine the cross section of a cast iron hollow cylindrical column. So it is also hollow cylindrical column. Cylindrical means circular, you can take with three meters long. So here we have to find the cross section itself. Material is cast iron. 3 meter is the length of the column with both ends fixed he has given. You should be very careful about end conditions. If nothing is given, you take both ends hinged. Okay, that, because that is the standard case. So, but here he has given both ends fixed. Uh, if it is carrying an axial load of 800 kilo Newton. So, it is carrying a load of 800 kilo Newton. Okay, that is safe load actually. So, safe load. 800 kilo is the safe load. Ratio of inner to external diameter is uh, 5 by 8. He has given the ratio of that uh, inner diameter to external diameter of that hollow cylindrical column as 5 divided by 8. So if that means 0.375. Take factor of safety as 4. So why he has given factor of safety? He has given axial load as 800 kN. So this is actually the safe load. When you multiply the safe load by the factor of safety, you are going to get the crippling load. Please note that. Huh? And uh, take FC. So it has 550 MPA. That is the crushing strength of the column. Alpha is 1 divided by 1600. That is Rankine's constant. That means for this problem, you have to use Rankine's formula. Because he has given Rankine's constant here, we have to use Rankine's formula. Now let us uh, take the data, whatever has been given. Both ends are fixed here. Actual length of the column is 3 meters. So since both ends are fixed, the effective length is equal to actual length divided by 2. That is L by 2. L is 3 meters or 3000 mm divided by 2. That is 1500 mm. Convert everything to Newton and mm. Mm. Then he has given the diameter ratio. Inner diameter to outer diameter. That is Di by D, DO. If you take the inner dia of that hollow 
cylindrical column or circular column as vi and outer dia as vo ratio is given as 5 by 8 or you can take uh, if you simplify that so di will be 5 by 8 into d naught 5 by 8 into d naught means okay 0 0.625 5 by 8 is 0 0.625 d naught and uh, I told you know P is the axial load or safe load. One, when, whenever they say axial load, it is safe load. Please note that it is safe load. It is to be multiplied by the factor of safe load to get the crippling load. So in this case, crippling load becomes 3200, 804 kilonewton. Okay. Or 3200 into 10 power 3 newton. Be careful there. Now, since he has given Rankine's uh, constant, we have to use Rankine's formula. So what is Rankine's formula? PCR is equal to Fc into A divided by 1 plus alpha into L by K whole square. So you should be careful here. Fc is given as 550 MPR Newton per mm square. That is known. PCR is 3200 into 10 power 3. Express that in Newtons. A value is the area of the column. Column section. So how do we, since uh, we don't know the diameter, area has to be expressed in terms of diameter. See, it is written here. See here. Area is, we know that for a hollow circular section, area is given by pi by 4 into d naught square minus di square. Here, di square is 0 0.625 d naught. That is given in the problem. Pi by 8, that ratio. So, substitute that here. So, what happens? A becomes pi by 4 into d naught square minus 0.625 d naught square because uh, we know that di is 0.625 d naught now simplify that only convert gets converted to only one unknown that is d naught so you will be getting a as 0.478 please check that please check that value pi by 4 into 1 minus 0.625 square please check that you are getting i think 0.478 d naught square so that is your area in terms of d naught. Then we need to calculate I also. Once again, the formula for finding moment of inertia of hollow circular section is pi by 64 into d naught power 4 minus di power 4. Here also we have to put for di as 0 0.625 d naught. Once again, simplify that. Take d naught power 4 outside. So you'll be getting I is equal to 0 0.0416 D naught power 4. So both I and A, they are expressed in terms of D naught. Okay. Now calculate the value of K. We know that K is the radius of direction, which is nothing but root of I by A. This I had explained in last class. I by A. So substitute for I and A. I is 0 0.0416 D naught power 4. A is 0.478 D naught square. So simplify that d naught power 4 and d naught square. So you will be left with d naught square. Square root of that will be d naught. So k will be this constant 0.295 d naught. Please check the values once fast. A is 5 by 4 into 1 minus 0.625 square into d naught square. I is 5 by 64 into 1 power 4 minus 0.625 power 4 d naught power. Then take the ratio and square root of that. You will be getting the value of k in terms of d naught. So since he has asked the cross section of the column, cross section means diameter. So we have to find the diameter. Once you find the diameter, either inner diameter or, or outer diameter, since you know the ratio di by d naught is equal to 5 by 8, if any one of them is known, di or d naught, you can find the other one. So please check that. Then what you have to do? You have to substitute those things here in the Rankine's formula. See here, PCR is 3200 to 10Q is equal to Fc is given as 550 Newton per mm square into A is 0.478 D naught square. We found out that. Divided by 1 plus alpha is given as 1 over 1600 Rankine's constant. L is 1500 effective length because it is fixed condition. L is taken as L by 2. Okay, that I have shown here. If it is hinged, then L is L only. You have to take 3000 only. But here both ends are fixed here. 
therefore you have to take l by 2 which is 1500 divided by k is 0.295 d naught that also we have seen here see here now what you are going to get here is if you just simplify this expression you are going to get a quadratic equation in d naught see here something like this no, no, not quadratic equation in D naught square actually. So D naught power 4 term will be there. Then D naught square term will be there. Then constant term will be there. So if you take this D naught square as X, then this becomes your X square term. This becomes X term. This becomes constant term. So you will be getting AX square plus BX plus C is equal to 0. So for using formula method, you can calculate the two values of D naught square. So everything has been done here. So D naught square is becomes X here because D naught power 4 is there, you know. So that becomes X square. This becomes X. This is constant term. So use that formula. So you know that X is equal to minus B plus R minus square root of B square minus 4AC divided by 2A. Formula method for solving the quadratic equation. If you do that, D naught square, you are going to get two values, two roots. One, one is actually negative. So you cannot have this negative value because D naught square cannot be negative because it becomes imaginary, root becomes imaginary. So D naught square 21,374, that is the value. Take D naught square root of this, you are going to get 146.2 mm. So this is what we have to do. So in this problem, since cross section is is asked, you have to find the diameter, that's all. So we have found the outer diameter. Then we know that 5 by 8 into D0 becomes DI. That is the ratio, uh, diameter ratio he has given. So DI will be 5 by 8 into D0. That will be 91 point something. Then area is, uh, you could just once you get D0 value, you can substitute for that uh, in that area. We have got earlier area is 0.478 d naught square. So since you got d naught square as this value, simplify that, substitute and simplify. So area you are getting 10,216 millimeter square. All all these calculations you please check later. Right? So similarly, then I give uh, for solid uh, column also. If they give solid column, you have to use the very the change that area will change, moment of inertia will change radius of gyration will change. All the other things remain same. Okay. So for the same problem, you can just make a note. You can try that. Please write down that. For the same problem, what you can do is determine the cross section of a cast iron solid cylindrical column. Instead of hollow, you take it as solid. Same, same length, 3 meters long with both ends fixed. Everything is same. Uh, 800 kilonewton, everything is same. But this is not there. Ratio of inner rotational diameter is not there. In the case of a solid cylindrical section, area is pi d square by 4. If you take d as the diameter, area is pi d square by 4. A, i will be pi by 64 into d power 4. That's all. Then k you can find out using root of i by a. Those things you substitute here. So you will be getting directly the value of d. So same problem, only change is Find the cross section of a solid circular corner. Solid circular corner. Okay. So that, that is the that you can make a you note. Know, and you can you do that. You just check the value. Whether the area you are going to get less or more than the uh, hollow circular section. Okay. So next problem is so in the previous problem, that means whatever problem I explained just now, problem number six, uh, in the previous problem. If E is 80 kilonewton per millimeter square, that is 80 kPa. So you can write it as um, 80 into 10 power 3, 80,000 newton per mm square. Please note that. Huh? 80 kilonewton per millimeter square means 80,000 newton per mm square. Find Euler's load. So E value has been given. So we have to find the Euler's load. For what length of the column does the Euler's formula cease to apply? On that day, I told that the uh, Euler's formula can be used only for short columns, only for long columns. It cannot be used for short columns. Okay. So there is a certain uh, minimum length of the column for which uh, the column has to, that formula has to be used. So less than that minimum length, 
you cannot apply Euler's formula because it becomes a short column. So first let us find the Euler's load for the same problem. E value is given because in the formula of Euler's formula, it depends on the value of E, pi square E i by L square. So here, it's a same problem means hollow circular section problem. Di and D naught we know now. So Di is 91.3, D naught is 146.2. Those values you take. You take those values. Then uh, you can calculate the value of I for this. So I will be, of course, here directly, it, uh, I is, uh, we have seen that uh, I is 0 0.0416, uh, D naught power 4. So D naught value we know now. If you put that value of D naught there, you will get the value of I. Now use the Euler's formula. The effective length is 1500 mm in this case also. Because uh, it is both the ends are fixed here. Capital L is equal to small l by 2. So PCR pi square EI by L square. So pi square E is 80 into 10 cube. That is 80,000. Into I value 0 0.0416 into D naught power 4. D naught we have found it is 146.2. Substitute that. Divided by L square, 1500 square. So if you simplify that, you will be getting like this. In Newtons, you are going to get. Suppose if you want to convert this into kilonewton, so it becomes how much? This is 10 power 6, you know. So divide this by 10 power 3. Divide by 10 power 3, you will get the value in kilonewton. That means 6.67 into 10 power 3, 6670 kilonewton. The same one, same value in kilonewton, it will be 6670 kilonewton. That is the answer. Okay. That is for the first part. Now, for the second part, what is the for what length of the column the Euler's formula cease to apply? So that means you cannot apply beyond that. That is the meaning. So for that, what you have to do, I had explained about this uh, in the last class. So take this formula, Euler's formula, pi square EI by L square. We know that uh, k is the root of i by a, or i becomes a into k square. Where k is the radius of variation, a is the cross section area. So divide this by a. So that uh, means bring a to this side. Okay. So PCR Euler divided by a will be equal to pi square e k square by l square. So this is nothing but your FC. FC. Okay. FC is equal. That is the crushing stress. Sorry, no, uh, crippling stress. Fc is equal to pi square e k square by l square. Therefore, l square becomes pi square e k square by Fc. Now, Fc is given as 550 here. 550 in this problem. So, pi square into e value 80,000 into k square. So, k already we have got uh, in the last problem, k as uh, 0.295 d naught. So, d naught value is known, 146 point something. Put that value, substitute that value 0.295 into 146.2 square of that divided by 550. Now simplify this. So you are going to get a 1634 millimeter. It is in the mm. L you are going, this is L square. Take the square root of that, you will get L. So what is that? That L is effective length. Now if you want actual length, it is reverse. So we know that in the case of a fixed uh, both ends fixed column effective length is equal to actual length divided by 2 so therefore actual length will be 2 into effective length so that is 2 times this 2 times 1634 mm which becomes uh, 3268 mm or 3.268 meter the meaning of this is suppose if the length of the column is less than this then it becomes a short column and we cannot apply Euler's formula. So this is how we have to think, okay? So use that um, FC value. FC is nothing but PCR divided by E. You keep that in mind. Substitute that FC. That is why I have divided, I have brought this A this side, this side. When you divide this load by area, you are going to get this stress. So that stress is limited. So it is fixed, here. so 550. So using that uh, limiting value of stress, uh, you are finding the length of the column uh, below which uh, we cannot apply Euler's formula. Okay, so if the length of the column is uh, less than 3.268 meter, we cannot apply the Euler's formula. That is the meaning of that. 
so this it is understand next problem i think today we will finish this i think another one or two problems are there a column 3.5 meter long has an i section so it's an i section here so a special case so only thing is uh, you have to find the uh, moment of inertia of i section that i had explained uh, in detail when i did that bending stress uh, chapter so that uh, parallax theorem using parallax theorem we have to find that so instead of rectangle circular hollow circular square i section one problem i have done just to you, you may not get i section problem in the examination but suppose if you get you should be in a position to do it huh? so we cannot say it all depends on the paper setter so a column 3.5 meter long has an i section with two equal flanges of 120 mm by 10 mm and web of 10 mm by 20 mm size so he has not given the figure so he has given the dimensions so top flange and bottom flange both are equal 120 mm width to 10 mm thickness web is 10 mm thickness and 120 uh, mm depth okay if uh, fc is equal to 320 mpa yeah? fc means that uh, crushing stress e value 200 gpa gpm is 10 power what uh, 200 gpa means it is 210 power 3 mpa so r 2 into 10 power 5 mpa newton per mm square alpha rankine's constant 1 over 7500 both ends of the column are hinged so he has given that please understand here it is a standard case hinged or pinned so your effective length is equal to actual length so actual length is given as 3.5 meter or 3500 mm so effective length is also same compare the buckling loads obtained by eulers and rankine's formula so here we have to just compare the uh, values of eulers to rankine's for load for the same uh, i section column uh, one problem i think we have done earlier also comparison so you have to use uh, he has given all the details so i section he has given so first you write down the i section diagram you write down so this is the i section 100 mm by uh, 120 mm by 10 mm and web is 10 mm by 120 mm see this is how the diagram will be so first thing you have to find out the moment of inertia so since it is symmetric one advantage is so your uh, neutral axis uh, or the centroidal axis will uh, will be exactly at the uh, center geometrical center but you have to use parallax theorem i don't want to explain in detail all this already i have explained it find out the moment of inertia of this ixx means that is the moment of inertia of this uh, column about this axis you are going to get this much using parallax theorem you have to do that then ixx then iyy also you have to find out why we have to find both uh, because i told you when the in the case of a column buckling takes place along the axis uh, or about the axis which has got minimum radius of variation the minimum radius of variation means in which axis minimum moment of inertia is there that becomes uh, the axis for minimum radius of variation because k is equal to root of i by a if i is minimum k will be minimum so you have to calculate both the values of ixx and iyy in this case because they have, they, will be, they will be different values so in this case you can observe iyy is less than ixx Mm -hmm. So I X X is 11.6 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. I Y Y is 2.8 into 10 power 6 millimeter power. That means this I Y Y is your I minimum minimum value. Minimum of these two is your I minimum. Use that value to find the value of K. So K is equal to root of I minimum divided by A. Root of I minimum divided by A. Substitute that. A is area of this entire I section. 120 into 10. Plus 120 into 10 plus 120 into 10, it becomes 3,600 millimeter square. So I minimum divided by A and the root gives the value of K, 28.33 millimeter. Okay, now calculate uh, the loads using both Euler's formula as well as Rankine's formula separately and compare. So Euler's formula, pi square e i by l square. So pi square e is 200 GPa or 2 into 10 power pi MPa. You have to express in MPa. Or newton per mm square into i value is minimum value i minimum we have to take that is i y y here 2.8 into 10 power 6 divided by l is 3500 millimeter square so you have to express in newtons and millimeters 
and if you simplify uh, you will be getting 465.68 kilonewton actually you are going to get in newton divided by 1000 you have to make you will get in kilonewton so please note that both the ends are hinged here since both the ends are hinged uh, effective length is equal to actual length see here capital L is equal to small l this is Euler's law then Rankine's formula you have to use because he has asked uh, compare the both the loads fc into a divided by 1 plus alpha into l by k whole square so fc is given as 320 it is given in the problem crushing strength fc is given as uh, 320 see here then k value we have found out already l value you know alpha also is given in the problem 1 over 7500 a is 3600 total area so if you substitute those things and simplify you are you are getting in newtons only divide by 1000 you have to make to get in kilonewton okay so here also we are getting 379.56 kilonewton so which is more here Euler's load is more than Rankine's load take the ratio so e was b divided by r 1.226 so your Euler's load is 1.226 times more than Rankine's load okay that is the answer so they can give any type of problem so cross section also they can give anything so there are varieties of problems, sir. Huh? So circular cross section, hollow circular, square, rectangular, and I section, they may give symmetrical I section. But even though it is symmetrical I section, you have to calculate moment of inertia about both the axes using parallel axis theorem. The last problem we have come now. A steel bar of solid circular section. This is solid circular section is 50 mm diameter. It is having a 50 mm diameter, D is 50 mm. Bar is pinned at each end and carries an axial load. So, pinned means hinged. So, it is hinged at both the ends and it is carrying an axial load, means the load is acting exactly along the axis of the column. If the limit of proportionality of the material is 2 times LPA, what do you mean by that? Yes, modulus. Limit of proportionality, that is another word used for yes, modulus. 2 times LPA means 2 times into uh, 2 times. Sorry, sorry, not times modulus. Limit of proportionality means that is uh, you know, uh, crushing stress. Mm -hmm. Crushing stress e is 210 MPa and E value 200 GP. Mm -hmm. GPA. Determine the minimum length for which Euler's formula is valid. Once again, this is what uh, I did in the last uh, case. So we have to use the minimum length for which the Euler's can be formula can be used so that. Uh, uh, it cannot be applied if the value of length of the column is less than that. Also find the value of Euler's buckling load if the column has this minimum length. So there are two parts here. First we will calculate the L value. What is the actual length of the column for which uh, Euler's formula can be used. If it is less than that then you cannot use Euler's formula. So D value 50 mm. So Fc value 210 Newton per mm square. E value 2 into 10 power 5 newton per mm square. The effective length is equal to actual length in this case because both the ends are hinged. So take the Euler's formula PCR E pi square EI by L square. So here, since it is a solid circular section, I is pi by 64 into d power 4. That formula you will be knowing. Substitute for D as 50, get the value of I in millimeter power 4. Then area, you know that area is pi d square by 4. So pi into 50 square by 4. So once you get area in millimeter square, i in millimeter power 4, k radius of gyration. In this case, since it is a uh, circular section, uh, your k minimum is either i x x or i y y because they are equal here. So root of i by a. So we call it as i. I minimum is i only. So i divided by a, if you do that under root, uh, you will get the value of k 12.5 in this case. All this you please check it later. Huh? 12.5 mm. Now what you have to do is here in this formula uh, bring this uh, you, you can write this uh, i as a k square. Same thing which I did in the last, the last problem. i can be written as a k square. Bring this a to the LHS. PCR by a is nothing but your FCR. So FCR is equal to pi square uh, what you will get pi square e k square divided by FCR. Okay, so yeah, FC means that is your uh, value, it is given as 210 here. So this is the this is what you are going to get. Uh, substitute for E, K, FC, everything, get the value of the length. Same procedure. 
last problem what we did the same procedure so l we are going to get 1211.8 mm or 1.211 meter so that is the minimum length of for which the noise formula can be applied if if the value of the length of the column is less than this for example if it is 1 meter then we cannot apply noise formula that is the minimum length. then corresponding to this length what is the euler's law so pi square ei by l square same formula but l you have to take this 1211.8 as l e value you know 210 uh, uh, then uh, 210 into 10 power 3 then i value also you got here i value we have so got here this is the i value in millimeter power 4 Uh, then l is this value one to one at this length of the column what is the corresponding noise flow so you are going to get the value in newtons divided by thousand you are going to get in kilometer so this is what i wanted to tell today so almost i covered all the problems in columns also derivations so what is a column what is euler's uh, buckling load rankine's buckling load rankine's load then how to compare those loads what are different end conditions in column there are four cases you have euler's formula derivation for four cases both ends hinged both ends fixed the one end fixed and one end hinged one end fixed and one end free then we discussed about effective length of column how short column and long column they fail then uh, we discussed uh, some problems on all the both uh, euler's as well as uh, rankine's formula Uh, of course we did problems on square rectangular circular hollow circular as well as uh, i section so this is complete uh, columns this thing so there are some five derivations four in uh, i s load this thing one in rankine's formula then uh, some definitions everything i had explained so you have to study them properly in the next class i am going to take up that mohar circle of module 2 so graphical method of finding uh, the compound uh, stresses that is principal forces and principal strains that is a graphical method that has to be done on graph sheet anyway i am going to explain that hmm? you have you have to do some problems some uh, uh, some uh, typical types of problems uh, you have to practice in that so next class i will be taking up that so you have to be thorough uh, this fifth unit is over now so deflections and columns i have completed that is the module 5 so only that in module 2 i had to cover two things one is mohar circle another one is the theories of failure so that is only a theory part so some two theories of failure i had to explain in that so i may require another three or four classes to complete this uh, sym syllabus mm -hmm. so you have to work a lot already i think i have taken uh, almost some 55 classes 60 classes up to 60 classes you can go So you have to work on your own. Okay. So you have to practice, practice, practice. Practice only makes you perfect. If you don't practice, definitely you will trouble. Mm -hmm. Lot of problems I have explained. I have given you notes, the note like this, PDF of notes, textbook also. I have sent you soft copy, one sample book. You take any problem. You of course you do by this method only. Whatever method I have explained, eh? using that only. Only notations may be different. Check the answers. That's all. Okay? That's all. That's all you have to do. And those who are not submitted assignment, you have to submit. You have to submit by today or tomorrow. And one more assignment I am going to give because I have completed this fifth module. I am going to give assignment on fifth module now by today or tomorrow. So I will give one week time for that. You have to submit. Okay. So this is what I wanted to explain. So for the third internals, you will be having the uh that uh, whatever torsion i think i have to give then uh, i am going to give these two things that is uh, deflections and columns also so torsion uh, deflections of uh, uh, deflections and columns so these three will be there for your uh, and of course uh, this mohar circle also i am going to include so these things uh, you have to study for your um, third uh, internals we don't know when they are going to conduct and your dates will be announced well before be prepared so those who are not submitted assignment submit it fast okay that's what i wanted to tell you today we'll meet in the next class then only seven students have joined huh? i don't know why
np slash I'll take the attendance. Oh no, not for that. Now it is showing okay. 13 students have joined. It's an important subject. You should not miss. If you miss the class, next class it will be difficult for you to attend. So you have to attend all the classes. Hmm? That is your job. Only one or two classes, okay. But uh, if you are not uh, attending regularly, then it will be a problem from your side only. We can't help. 1827. 1827 28 present sir 19002 yes sir 3 yes sir 5 present sir Present, sir. Ten. Present, sir. Thirteen. Thirteen. Madhesh. Present, sir. Fourteen. Present, sir. Sixteen. Present, sir. Nineteen. Present, sir. Okay. Prepare well. Don't waste time. 